In a titration, we titrate samples uh, until we see a change in uh, a property of the substance. And that abrupt physical change is called the end point of the titration. That's when you know that you are done. In our case, we're using a substance called an indicator to show us where that endpoint is. If you look closely, you see that the solution, our titrant in the burette, is a clear colorless solution. As well, our solution, the sample, um, is also a clear colorless solution. And if you look back at the reaction between KHP and sodium hydroxide, you see that we're forming a salt and water, also clear and colorless. So how will we know when this is done? That's why we add our indicator. Our indicator that we're using is something called phenolphthalein, and it is an indicator used in acid-based titrations. It is colorless in an acid solution. It turns to bright pink when a base is present. So once we've hit the end point of the solution, the color of the sample in our Erlenmeyer flask will be pink. Okay, I wanna take a minute and talk to you guys about how we fill up our burette. Now when we fill it up, after we have prepped it properly, we want to fill it up, um, and it doesn't have to be 100% full. Kids always make this mistake that they have to get it to 0.0, .0 and you don't. All we need to do when we do titrations is take really accurate volume readings of whatever those volumes might be. So students always want to fill it up right to 0.0 .0 and they waste a lot of time trying to get the meniscus of the titrant right up to that mark. I don't have mine at 0.0. .0. Um, it's just below 3. But that's okay as long as I take a really accurate volume reading to start. So what I'm going to do to begin my titration is I want to know what volume does this burette say um, the titrant is at before I start. And so when I take this volume reading, a couple of things are very important. Number one, I need to be at eye level. Now I'm a very short person, perhaps you can relate. Um, so I'm going to need to actually crawl up and see uh, what is the volume reading. So get myself eye level with this burette. I can't, I don't have a lot of room to move the burette down, so I have to move myself up. Second thing that I need to do is know how to take a proper volume reading. This particular burette, um, as yours will be as well, is calibrated to um, every tenth of a milliliter. So it has big markings on it and numbers for every milliliter, and then between every milliliter, milliliter there are um, tenth of milliliter markings. That's great, and I'm going to go one step further with that. When I take a look at the level um, on the burette, I am going to estimate the hundredths digit, so the second digit after the decimal. So crawling up, getting eye level. Okay, so this, the bottom, and again with, with the bottom of the meniscus, so it's between uh, 3.1 and 3.2, and I would say it's maybe a little bit closer to 3.2, so I'm going to call this 3.17 milliliters. That is my initial reading for this first trial, 3.17 milliliters. Once I have the volume uh, read and noted properly, the initial volume, I'm ready to start titrating. So what I've done is I've prepared my sample. Um, this is my sample again of KHP. It was uh, it is 10 milliliters. That means I've pipetted, because we want to be very accurate, I've pipetted in 10 milliliters of, uh, of the sample of the KHP solution that I made up so that we can standardize this sodium hydroxide. Once I start the titration, I need to do four trials. So in science, our results need to be repeatable. Um, and this is one of those times where we need to do more than one trial here. What we're going to do is we're going to do four. The goal of a titration is to get three trials with a range of 0 0.2 milliliters. So from our highest volume delivered to our lowest volume delivered, we need a range of 0 0.2. 
The best way to accomplish this is to do a fourth trial, which actually would be your first trial, uh, and run that as a fast trial. This actually makes the remaining three trials go a lot more quickly. Let me show you first a fast trial. So I have not done this titration yet. This is my first trial. So this is what you will do also on your first trial for your sample analysis. All I'm going to do here is um, simply just open the stopcock of the burette and let the titrant flow in. So this will be one person's job. Okay, and you can see, hopefully, a little bit of pink appearing uh, when the base is dropped in. Um, and as that drops in, uh, I, I swirl the Erlenmeyer flask around. So this is why we use a flask instead of a beaker. A beaker with its straight up and down um, opening, things can splash out, so our solution can splash out. With an Erlenmeyer flask, we have kind of a more narrow neck, so we, it allows us to kind of move that right up uh, so that the tip of the um, burette is right into the flask and it allows us to swirl um, without losing any solution. So again, con sorry, continuing on with the fast trial, I'm just going to open this up. You can see it turns pink, but as I swirl, the pink goes away. Although the more titrant I add, the longer the pink stays around. You're going to find this as well. This tells me my indicator is working at least. That's always a good sign or that I've put indicator in. Okay, pink stays around for a little bit longer each time. But with swirls, it goes away. Ooh. Okay, we're getting really close. I can tell by how long it's taking the, um, the pink of the indicator to go away. And see how bright pink that is. I hope you guys can see anyways. Oh yeah, you can. So taking longer and longer each time. All right, now this is very dark. I can tell you already that this is not a good trial. So again, that good trial is one that's gonna fall within the proper range um, of 0 0.2 from lowest volume delivered to highest volume delivered, but that's okay. Let me take this final volume reading here and then I'll tell you the point of doing this fast trial. So again, getting eye level, this one I can do on tiptoes. This is at almost 14. I'm going to call it 13.9. You know what? I'm going to call it 14 even. Looks like that meniscus is right on 14. So I'm going to call it, please make sure that we write this down with the appropriate number of decimal places, 14.00 milliliters. Take a look at how pink that is, right? That, friends, is far too dark. That's okay. This was a fast trial. The purpose of a fast trial is for us to figure out, okay, about how many milliliters of solution do I need to add? So my initial uh, reading on this particular um, trial was 3.17. My final reading was 14.00 